personal development. All right, that's the latest in terms of news making headlines. And just as I had promised a little bit earlier on during the second hour of the broadcast, we'll get to reflect on Ruto's plan as he had articulated during yesterday's roundtable interview with various journalists. And it was proper to know that he talked about an array of issues touching on the economy, the cost of living, his housing plan, the dollar rate in the country, the fight against corruption, so, so much to cover, so little time. Allow me to introduce my panelists joining me in studio to help us make sense of what the president said yesterday. I'm joined by Diana Gishengo, who's the national coordinator at the Institute of Social Accountability. Karibu sana, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you for making you. time. Equally joined by Professor Exen Iraqi, an economist. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Exen. Karibu sana to the broadcast. Thank you for this late night express. Yeah. And I see you uh, sticking to the theme. Your tie is telling about the, <laughs> <laughs> the ah, season we're uh, in right now. Christmas is just next week. Uh, yes, uh, yes. I'm just doing a rehearsal. Ah, I'm telling you. Hey, have, he's well you prepared. Have Christmas, yeah. <laughs> you're among the lucky ones. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, There's no Christmas. No, I, I, can tell, I can tell you I'm just creating an impression. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, you're usually good at that. It's a thought that counts. <laughs> anyway, gentlemen and lady, thank you so much for thank your time. You. As I mentioned, we just want to evaluate what the president said, what it means to the Kenyan population, and as a matter of fact, is that the reality on the ground? So as I mentioned, he talked about many things. I'd like us to start with an excerpt of his uh, interview on what he had to say about the country's debt distress, because he said he's had to make a couple of painful decisions for the better of the country. Listen in. Our economy today is out of debt distress. And that is the truth. For your information, if I didn't step in, let me even say, if I wasn't president, the kind of decisions I have made, very difficult decisions. You know, very painful decisions. Decisions that I know they will cause pain. But it is better we make those decisions now than get Kenya into that distress. There are almost eight countries in our continent, including one that went into debt distress. I don't want to mention countries, you know them, last almost three weeks or, or one month. That is the worst thing that can happen to any country, to go into debt distress. We, have, we are now out of debt distress. Our economy is stable, but the difficult part is still there. We still have to navigate. All we have done is to avoid the cliff, right? That we have avoided because we have negotiated, uh, we have put bricks on expenditure. Mm -hmm. We have negotiated a good package with the World Bank, with IMF, with development partners, with bilateral uh, countries, China, Europe, and everywhere. And that's why I have been on the road uh, so many times people ask, what is he doing? It was necessary for me to step in and stabilize so that Kenya does not go into debt. Just an excerpt of what he had to say on debt, distress, and how the country is managing with that. So we've avoided the cliff. Professor, I'd like to begin with you on this because, I mean, it's touching on the economy. So just borrowing from what the president